So going talking about the obesity, obesity side, one of the reasons for obesity, I believe, for people who eat chicken and other animals are viruses in them. Adeno, there's a chicken virus and adenovirus. And, and this explains why a study in 2009 showed that poultry is associated with people who, who grow the biggest, who get the fattest, have the, have the biggest weight lines. And it makes sense. If you're eating lots of chicken that have lots of chicken viruses and those virus is specifically hijack the cell and cause larger fat cells, and you're going to get more obese. So that's one example. Here's another example. It's um, something called endotoxin, or the, the long name is LPS or lipopolysaccharides. Lipo is a fatty toxin. It's, it's, it surrounds gram-negative bacteria, which are in eggs, and it's, they're in our GI tract. Again, these, these um, even if organic meat is not grown in a sterile environment, you're being exposed to this endotoxin. If you're eating the meat, you might say, well, well, guess what, Dr. Josh? I cook my meat. The problem is endotoxins heat stable. It'll still be around after you cook it and put it in your body. And this is one of the reasons why people who eat animal products, who eat meat, have higher rates of autoimmune diseases because this LPS, this endotoxin, it triggers your immune system because your immune system says, hey, this is from bacteria. It's like all decks on, you know, I'll, you know let, let, let's, let's attack this. this is, that's the job of the immune system is to, is to ward off against outsiders. And these bacteria are outsiders. So here's another component that I think is critical that I'm guessing many of you have never heard of, and that's biofilm. So, and, and it turns out lipids, fats are a major part of biofilm. So, so what is biofilm? It's basically what it sounds like. It's a biological film. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Josh. Well, here's an example. If you ever passed a, a, a pond that's, you know, doesn't have uh, water that's flowing, you, you might see something growing on it, something green. And that, and that green part is biofilm. So, but what about in people? Like, yeah, that's a pond. What about in people? Well, we all have biofilm in our mouth, and that's hopefully why we brush our teeth a couple of times a day. We have biofilm in our ears. If you ever have a, a hip implant, you'll get on, on the surface, like the metal surface, that's not a normal surface. It's hard for your immune system to get to. You can get biofilm growing on a hip implant or a breast implant. And then, and then Lyme disease, or other infections, the Lyme spirochete will spin biofilm around itself to protect it from your body's immune system. See, it's, this is an, an ancient war um, for survival, and we're we're just becoming aware of it. So this is what uh, you know. Traditionally, when I think about bacteria, I think about what the nice Greek word planktonic. You know, single single film, um, single. I'm sorry, not film. Single bacteria on their own, but for example, in the mouth or another surface, the bacteria can land and quickly grow and form a colony. And um, this is important because these bacteria can, can act together even though they're different species. So if you know some of these, the, 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 the lighter blue ones have antibiotic resistance, they're gonna share that genetic material with their neighbors even though they might be different species. And, and the the natural history of it is it grows and then forms, this is under a microscope, this, this structure that looks like a, a mushroom and then release, and that's the cycle. And here's, here's a more beautiful picture of it. Um, so, so why am I talking about this biofilm? Apart from, you know, it's beautiful and it looks like an onion because this is a fatty structure that can store fatty toxins in addition to infections. That's why we're talking about it. And this is one of the causes of chronic diseases that no one's heard of. Because the key is, unless you bust up this biofilm, these toxins and infections can stay there and wreak havoc. So why am I talking about mold? It's, it's a, it's a, it produces fatty toxins, 
that can devastate people. And it's a lot more common than people understand. And that's why if you're trying to remediate, don't do this at home. This is, you know, or if you do, this is truly a chemical or biological warfare. This is used in biological warfare to destroy the gut and other tissue of enemy soldiers. And this is the chemical structure of trichothecine from black mold that can literally, it's fat soluble, it can literally go in through your eyes back into your brain. So how can you bust the biofilm? Well, here are some ways. Uh, things like glutathione, nitric oxide, which is a gas, just one nitrogen and one oxygen atom that are stuck together that are used. In, actually, it's a signal that's, that your body gives us to open up blood vessels, but it's also a signal that bacteria use something called quorum sensing. It's, it's basically a scent that they put out to attract other bacteria. Vitamin C will do it, alpha lipoic acid will do it. Alpha lipoic acid is, I would consider a vitamin. It also increases uh, glutathione levels. And again, glutathione is the master detoxifier for the body. We've spoken a little bit about phosphatidylcholine. Um, there's something called systemic fibrinolytic enzymes like natokinase, lumbrokinase, serapeptase. These, can, these, these enzymes can all bust up biofilm. And when they do, you, you might get something called a Herxheimer reaction where you don't feel good. And that's the key. You don't want, because you've accumulated, just like you've accumulated all these chemicals and toxins throughout your life, you've accumulated some of these infections through your life too. You do not want to release all this biofilm all at once or you'll end up potentially getting very sick. Uh, one, one of my favorite ways to bust biofilm is a supplement, Cardio Miracle, you can find out about it on my website, drjosh.com, D-R-J-O-S-H. So again, the structure of glutathione has three amino acids stuck together. There are different methods for obtaining uh, glutathione orally. One of my favorite is NAC, although I'll just be upfront with you. I think the government has been making it a lot harder. I don't think you can get NAC orally anymore on Amazon. For whatever reason, they, they decided that we don't want the general public to, to get NAC, which the body converts into glutathione. Um, let's see, other things, other ways to get it. You can take it orally. You can get it intravenously. You can also breathe it in. And as you get older, your levels of glutathione go down. And that's a problem because glutathione is, again, the master detoxifier. We went over phosphatidylcholine, alpha lipoic acid. This is the structure. You've got a a charged side and a, and a fatty side. And it helps with, with uh, increasing the levels of glutathione. So there are different ways of removing toxin. I'm running short on time. So I will just share with you one way, which is through the liver, which doesn't fully develop till the age of 10, kind of interesting. And I know a busy slide to convert from fatty toxins to water soluble. But here's the key, and, and there are different phases using glutathione, and different amino acids like taurine, different vitamins. But I wanna focus on removing toxins, removing obesogens. There are basically three ways your body can remove, remove it through sweat, through bowels, or through urine. And this is why if you're trying to detoxify, you, you need to exercise or go into saunas to sweat. You want to eat lots of fiber in your diet because the fiber will, will, will pull some of these toxins through. And you want to drink plenty of water because you will flush out and you'll maximize the urine side. So busy slide, I'm not going to test you on this. I just want you to know general background. And I want you, on this slide, I want you to focus on, on the right side, which is this is what traditional medicine says about mold toxin or micro fatty toxin exposure except for supportive therapy like diet and hydration, there are almost no treatments for mycotoxin exposure. And, and I disagree with this. What, what are you gonna do? I've, I've seen lots of patients who, who have high levels of mold toxins and bad brain fog and other symptoms. You're just gonna say, yeah, eat the right diet and drink water. No, you, you might say that, but there's gotta be something we can do. And, and there actually are things you can do for them. Here are just some ideas. 
binding agents like cholestyramine, antifungal drugs, uh, activated charcoal, bentonite clay binders, naltrexone, that there are, there are to, to improve your immune system. There are lots of different approaches. So there are diets that increase toxins and diets that remove them. The traditional American diet and the traditional American lifestyle right now of just sitting and watching TV um, is not going to remove toxins. But what will help remove toxins are exercising and eating organic plants. And I see I'm running short of time, but let me quickly tell you my story. Uh, you know, a dozen years ago, I was overweight uh, compared to my son and, and father and compared to historically me. And my blood pressure was running high and I was trying the traditional things. They weren't working. And I was aware of studies that showed the only groups with a, who were not obese with a BMI under 25 were the vegans. I'm like, oh, and by the way, they have much lower rates of, of diabetes and hypertension. Hey, this looks pretty good. And then I remember Dr. Neil Barnard, I can't believe it. He's one of the lectures on this series too. But when I was a medical student, you know, 30 years ago, he, would, he actually came to Harvard Medical School and he lectured, but unfortunately he wasn't part of the core curriculum. No, it was, hey, it's 4 p.m. Do you want to come to the student center and listen to Dr. Barnard? So I did. And I remember what he said. And I remember thinking, wow, that makes a lot of sense. But if, if I tried to eat that way, I don't think I would get any support. And if I tried to promote this to my patients, I don't think I get any support from my attendings who are in charge. And, uh, but I remembered it. And then uh, a dozen years ago, I went to a lecture in Las Vegas of all places, John Mackey, the, the CEO of Whole Foods. And he said, basically, there a room of like 30 or 40 of us. He said, it, when you, if you go to my store, I only, the, the healthy things, the only thing you should be eating are the whole, whole foods, the, the fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. And I'm like, what CEO in his right mind would tell you, do not eat 90% of the products in my store? I was like, whoa. That caught my attention. And then I found, uh, in addition to finding the, the real truth about health in Orlando in person 10 years ago, I also found Dr. Michael Greger and his website, nutritionfacts.org. And literally, I've been studying this the last you know, 10 years. So, and it worked, it paid off. I was able to, to lose, lose my weight. And um, I've done a 10 day water fast. Hopefully went from fat to skinny. Um, yeah, there's me. <laughs> abdominal view. All right. So here, here are the numbers. Basically, my visceral fat, the, the dangerous fat, I lost 20%. You know, during the 10 days, I only lost you know, four, seven pounds, 4% of my weight. And, and, and this, this is in graphical form. The key is I lost 20% of the highly inflammatory visceral fat. And, and I know this because we, we did, we did a, a DEXA scan to measure the exact components. I didn't lose muscle. I lost total fat, 10%. And, but, but, you know, total weight loss, it wasn't about losing the weight as much as the body composition. So I'm a huge fan of fasting. I'm also a huge fan of exercise. Just don't do it at the same time. So, and I know we're, we're running short on time. Heavy metals, things like mercury, lead. Um, you can use hair testing, other testing. You can treat it with things like glutathione, cilantro, chlorella, garlic, wheatgrass juice, and even chelation. You can do orally or intravenously or both. And you can actually stimulate uh, before you do some of the testing to make sure you don't have heavy metal trapped because even though it's trapped inside you in, in biofilm or other places, it, it, can, it can still wreak habit in low doses. So I, I encourage you to get testing for toxins, heavy metals, Lyme, if you're symptomatic, viruses, you can actually, there's a blood test for biofilm you can do. Again, your conventional doctor is not, doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Um, and then petrochemicals like the PCBs and DDTs and phthalates. So in conclusion, um, the fat trap, fat is trapped. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Like Dr. McDougall says, toxins trap the fat and then to toxins are trapped in the fat. So this is this was a moving picture. It's it's one of these interlinked, complicated things in life, and but it's important. But fixing it is not easy. It's more than just one thing. So we talked about briefly the oil paradox. You don't want oil in your diet, but don't 
don't, uh, I'm a fan of essential oils. If they're pure, you need to make sure they've been purified because the last thing you want to do is, is take, you know, essential oils with obesogens or other chemicals on them. And then as a review, processed food companies add salt, sugar, and fat and excitotoxins to trap you into eating their food, their, their junk foods. So conclusions, cut out the animal fat products, avoid fat, avoid plastics and other toxins like heavy metals. Uh, there's supplements that promote nitric oxide like Cardio Miracle, other things um, like nanokinase that can help bust biofilm. Exercise is great, fasting is great. I like uh, this website, safecosmetics.org. And the, the, there's an app called on your phone called Think Dirty. I know, great name, right? Um, and then th there are other sources like uh, of chemicals, VOCs like bedding or flooring. So don't get overwhelmed. I mean, I've shared with you so much. I don't want your reaction to be, this is too much for me. I can't do this. No, you can do it. Just one step at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. Literally, it took me many, many years to do this. I mean, first I went you know, from eating meat and then I cut out the meat and then I cut out the fish and then I cut out the egg. And the last thing that I've cut out was the cheese. It took me literally years. I wish it hadn't taken me years. Uh, so I wish you um, um, luck at doing that. And, you know, here, here is my contact. <laughs>